morning. Back to work today, I guess. I uh, took the day yesterday, went and judged the FFA proficiency contest applications for Michigan. And I got back here, it was 3.30 or 4 o'clock, and uh, well, that tractor wasn't sitting there. Uh, Phil had some trouble with a uh, brake something on a semi-trailer, so he had taken it out and had the semi in here, and basically I couldn't do much work. So I uh, just kind of worked on the computer in the afternoon, and today, back to this tractor. Uh, we're going to try and do some cleaning today and get it all polished up, I think. Before I can do any work on cleaning that tractor off, we've got to fix our power washer. Uh, the other day when I was using it, I went to start it up, and it was tripping that breaker out, if you remember. And I don't know why, I haven't figured it out yet, but I just tried it again and it's doing the same thing. So, the pump turns, but it's not froze up. So, we're gonna have to trace some wires, I guess, take some stuff apart and see if I can't figure anything out. I took the switch out to see if there was something in there. And uh, while I don't see anything glaringly obvious wrong, I do see mouse droppings which probably means they ate through the insulation somewhere on one of these wires, which is causing our short. Well, I'm not finding anything here. I took off this front cover place, plate and all these wires and everything in there looks really good. That's clean. So I don't think the problem is in there. And uh, I took some cover cover off over here just to see what these wires and everything look like. And they don't look bad. Some of this stuff is a little dirty, but this has more to do with the burner system than the uh, pump itself. And it's tripping when I just turn on the pump, not the burner. So I don't really think it's this. So I'm kind of leaning towards maybe it being on the motor itself or in the motor on the pump, which means that's gonna have to come out. And I really don't wanna do that, but I guess we might have to. Definitely is the pump motor and it's gonna have to come out. Um, so here's what I did. I disconnected these two wires, which are the two hot wires going into that motor uh, from the switch. And I turned the switch on to see if that would uh, pop the breaker and it did not. So with these two off, it did not um, trip the circuit breaker. Those two wires just go to that motor back in there. And that means basically Something is wrong with that motor. So it's gotta come out. I'm trying to figure out how to get it out at the moment. I think I can take this bolt and this bolt out. And maybe we'll take this door off, these screws on the side here. Uh, and this whole tray might slide out. All right, I've got it out. Like I said, it turns, nothing's locked up. So there's clearly something in the wiring uh, or the motor itself. I'm gonna take this cover off and see what it looks like in there, but if I don't see anything obvious, then it's gonna probably be one of them things that's beyond my capabilities and we'll have to take it somewhere and have them fix it, but we'll see. What are we gonna find? Think a mouse is gonna jump out of there? Ah! Hmm, well, Nothing glaringly obvious, but these are capacitors, and I'm guessing that one of those is the problem. Of course, I don't know why that would make it short, or trip the breaker. Alright, I don't know, I'm going to do a little investigating here. Can you guys hear that? I took the uh, belt off so I could spin the motor free. She sounds pretty rough. This motor, this power washer in general, is pretty old. We've had it for probably a good 15 years. Never really done anything with this motor, so I guess it's time for some attention. So I'm going to take it off and take it to an electric motor repair shop that's not too far from here because this is beyond my uh, willingness to tackle for a project, although I probably could figure it out. but. Uh, we'll let the people that do this for a living do it, and hopefully we can get it back sometime next week. So I got the motor out, and I was kind of curious, so I took this cover off. Look what I found. This fan's in pretty rough shape. Pretty rough shape. Yep, yep, that's a problem. 
I'm guessing she got real hot because that fan wasn't really turning. It was, definitely wasn't turning. wasn't turning at all. All right, well, um, that power washer is going to be out of commission for a little while until we either get that motor fixed or get a new motor, it appears. Uh, so I'm just going to clean this stuff up and push it off to the side there. In the meantime, that leaves me in a little bit of a bind on what to do with cleaning this tractor up today because I need to use my foam cannon, which I have to have a power washer for. We do have another power washer. It's a gas-powered one, uh, but it's cold water only, which I guess I'm probably going to have to deal with that today, aren't I? So I'll uh, probably go and get that around, and we'll have to set it outside, run the hoses under the door to wash inside, which is backwards. Um, but here's what it is. Oh, we do have a crap ton of tar on this tractor that we've got to deal with before we get to any more washing. So uh, I guess that's what's going to happen here over the next little while. Ah. Uh, from the last tractor we did that had tar on it, I got lots of suggestions on what to use to take tar off. None of them involved the products designed for bug and tar remover. Go figure. Um, the one that I have found that works the best right now is still the brake clean, and so I'm probably going to stick with that. WD-40 did work. Diesel fuel did work. The problem with those, especially the WD-40, was that it leaves a film on stuff. Like, I used it on the windows, the back windows of that other tractor, and it just... I had to get the WD-40 film off of the window in order to get it clean, and I don't like that. And so uh, the, the brake clean comes off really easy. That was not a problem at all. So I am going to start with that, and we'll see how much of this tar we have and start getting it off, I guess. So uh, just for a good before picture, kind of. I wanted to get a good shot of the top of this hood. It's really dull, and I know it's still dirty, um, but we're gonna make this shine really nice. I also wanted to show you that spots like that and these, there was pretty thick tar on them, but when I power washed it earlier this week, I was able to use the hot water and blow the big stuff off. And so now when I spray it with this foam, it re or the, sorry, uh, this brake cleaner, it really just melts it right off. That stuff is easy to clean up. And that's why I use brake cleaner. Well, most of the tar is off the tractor. I say most because I'm sure that I missed some somewhere. Yeah, see, right there. Oh well. Uh, however, I did find this spot. That's not tar. That's paint missing which is a problem so we're gonna have to fix that somehow um yeah unfortunately it's probably going to be a can of spray paint over that but i'm going to do my best to blend them together so i want to get the area real clean and then paint it and uh, we'll see what it looks like i don't know but i might wait until after i wash because if i paint it then i can't wash today so um yeah not thrilled about that spot All right, uh, I got this hooked up and turned on the water, but nothing comes out when I squeeze the trigger. Which probably means that there's ice in the hose. Because the pump would have been drained, so I'm not worried about that. But uh, the hose would have had some water in it. It's cold in the back of the shop, so it's probably got ice in there that's not allowing the water to flow. So basically we're going to let it set until it thaws and then we can use it. All right, I got that power washer running outside. Hose is thawed out. I set up a GoPro camera over there. And I've got my foam cannon ready to go. So we're gonna put that on, foam tractor, wipe it down with a rag and get her nice and clean. Here we go, you ready? Ah, and that stuff is cool.
See, it looks better already. I need to get a towel real quick, dry stuff off so I don't get water spots, but uh, that foam sure is good stuff. All right, uh, I got this dried off a little bit and uh, uh, I am going to let it set here for a while. Uh, it's a little after 11. I've got some running around to do. I need to take this motor down to the uh, repair shop for that and I got a couple other stops that I need to make and get some lunch. So. Uh, we'll come back to that this afternoon. Hopefully it'll be dried off in the next couple of hours and then we'll, I don't know what we'll do. Polish it, probably. Yeah, I think that's the plan. I am back from lunch and dropping off that motor. I took it down to the repair place. Said it'd probably take a week to get that back, so uh, we'll deal with that. We'll get it back next week sometime, which is fine, no big deal. Um, and I... I'm gonna start working on this tractor, uh, get that ceramic coating on. I wanted to show you guys what this hood looks like here now. I know that the camera doesn't pick it up quite as good as what I can see it, but it's definitely dull. Uh, it's basically the results of it sitting outside. The side panels look quite a bit shinier than the top of the hood does. And so that's where we're gonna get our uh, polisher out that we used the other day on the other tractor and buff this out, get some uh, compound and uh, make it shiny before we put the ceramic coating on and then the ceramic coating will kind of help protect that shine All right, if you didn't see the video from a week or two ago where I was doing this with the other tractor. I've got this really nice uh, uh, Rotary buffer here. I've got a wool pad on there uh, that I made damp and I've got this uh, McGuire's uh, polish for it uh, this one's a little finer cut than the stuff that I used on the 8430 because it's not weathered quite as bad. So um, just kind of to help take out the real fine surface scratches and remove the dull look from it. Should make it shine really nice. So put a little bit on. And start buffing. This is a two-hand job. Sorry, I can't film it very good. All right, I buffed this front section in front of them big vents there. Uh, I'm gonna wipe off the glaze and see what it looks like. Um, I thought it would shine up a little bit quicker. I might need to use a little bit uh, heavier uh, polish or uh, glaze. Do it again, we'll see. All right, well it is definitely better than it was and I think you can see that up there versus down here. Nice darker green color, uh, but not where I want it. So I'm going to get that other polish that I've got. It's a little bit, uh, I'm going to say grittier, but it's not really grittier. It's just a, it's a heavier cut. And so it'll uh, help take some of the deeper scratches out a little bit better and shine it. And then I might have to use this one again after I, you know, kind of work backwards from the heaviest to the lightest. Just wiping off the buffing compound did a nice job okay well I've got this uh, buffing compound all wiped off or at least the first stuff um, I'm really pretty happy with the sides although I did find I've got some paint chips and there's not a whole lot I can do about them without turning this into a much bigger project so I'm probably not gonna worry about them unfortunately you can see this paint is sort of rough, orange peely. That's really not the clear coat in an orange peel. It's more so, I think, it's the actual hood itself because it's a plastic material. It's not, um, it's just not quite smooth. It's always been like that from the time it was new. So, um, I don't know, it, yeah, it is what it is. I'd like it to be nice and smooth and shiny, but yeah, so. Um, anyway. I'm not real happy with the top still. And so I think I'm gonna go with a, that finer buffing compound and go over it again. It is certainly a lot better than it was. Just not, there's still some dull spots to it. So uh, I'm gonna buff that out again. Probably won't do the sides because that looks pretty good. And uh, then we'll get it cleaned up with some rubbing alcohol and get our ceramic coating on it. It's gonna be a workout using this thing. I'm actually sweating a little bit. I think I'm done with it though. Um, I did go ahead and do the fender. 
The rear fenders, uh, while I had that uh, heavy stuff that I was using the first coat, um, and then after I got done with that, I washed my pad out so that it would be clean, and uh, did the top of the hood, and I did do just a little bit on the sides there after I got to looking at it. So uh, I need to go ahead and wipe it off, and then uh, next step, I guess. All right, I got all of the buffing compound washed off or wiped off. I went ahead and washed the tractor down with soap and a rag and a hose again, and I dried it. So I'm just waiting on the last little residual moisture to dry off of it. And then it's our final cleaning step, which is the uh, isopropyl alcohol. And uh, then we'll be ready for that ceramic. Okay, the hood on that tractor is as clean as it is going to get. So it is time for our ceramic coating. Uh, same stuff we used on the other tractor. It's uh, Armor Shield 9 by a company called Avalon King. Supposed to be very good stuff. Basically, you take this foam block, wrap it in a little cloth, put some drops on there from this bottle. We'll wipe it on up and down. We'll wipe it across horizontal, let it set for two or three minutes, and then we take this towel and wipe it off. Uh, I'm hoping that this coating will bring the deep green, nice John Deere pretty color back. Cause while it's starting to shine a little bit, it's just a little pale and off and I don't like it. So uh, wax would do that and that's what this ceramic coating is supposed to do. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a section on and then we'll do a little side by side see if you can see a difference picture. Can you tell which side I put it on? I have not wiped it off yet and let it cure, but we're waiting for it to dry. I'm gonna wipe it off. And I'm actually gonna put two coats on this tractor. It says you can do that. I've got plenty of product to do it, so I'm going to. See it? Do you see the line? It's pretty. <clears throat> Sometimes it's hard to see, depending on your angle. But it is there. This stuff works pretty good. All right, I'm just finishing up with the first coat of that ceramic. And other than just about falling off of this tire I'm standing on, it went pretty smoothly. So what happens with worn out tires, there's no lugs to stand on. But, um, looks decent. I am getting uh, pushed out here a little bit. Dad brought the backhoe in the shop. They're calling for snow tonight. Four or five inches of snow, I guess. Um, although it's supposed to be warm tomorrow, but they were worried about having to push snow in the driveways tonight, so uh, we're gonna bring that in here. Also, Monday morning, today's Friday afternoon, so Monday morning, uh, our tire guy is coming. We're gonna replace these tires on the front of this tractor, and he's also gonna look at that uh, rear tire on the 8430, the last tractor that we had in here that had that leak around the bead. So, um, I would like to have both of them in the shop over the weekend so that they're warm and ready when he gets here Monday morning. So I'm going to do a little tractor shuffling here and uh, get the forklift out of the way and move this power washer out of the way and see if I can't get this tractor spun around so it's facing the opposite direction and get the 8430 brought into here. And then uh, we'll be ready to do that stuff on Monday. Uh, it's a quarter to five. I gotta go get my boys tonight, so I don't know that I'm gonna have time to put another coat on this hood, but I am going to do it, whether it's tonight or Monday, probably. Let's see. Dirt. All right, uh, yeah, so let's start shuffling some equipment around, I guess. Okay, I got the forklift over there, cleaned up the power washer and the hose and some of this stuff. My goal now is to get that tractor that we're working on where do I want it? I think I want it to sit about right here. I need to be able to use the hoist to help move them tires around on Monday. So that's what I'm trying to figure out is how to get that tractor where I can use the hoist and the 8430 that's back there up here where we can still work on it and get to the right side. So what is the best way to do it? I'm gonna open these doors up and see what we got room for. I might be able to do it without actually having to take anything outside. One of those times a bigger shop would come in handy. So uh, that tractor back there won't start. 
I don't know if it's because it's cold or though the battery is dead, dead or run down. It was it would turn over, but just not enough to fire. So that kills my plans of the way I wanted to get stuff moved around in here. So I'm getting this tractor where I want it to go. And then uh, I'm going to put the battery charger on that. And sometime this weekend, we'll just pull that outside and go around and come in through the front. And we'll put it right in front of this one. So I'm just going to back this up so just far enough, but I can get the door closed. All right here. All right. We'll pull that other tractor up there uh, sometime this weekend after it's said time to charge batteries and uh, we'll actually start. In the meantime, this one's going to sit here. We can get to both sides to change these front tires and my hoist uh, crane, o red crane will come out and to be able to get to them there. Uh, we can even get the forklift out to help if we need to. The backhoe is easily accessible for pushing driveways, which is what we use to push snow. Um, so I'm going to, real quick, hose this floor off just to help clean up some of the dirt uh, from washing here and let that ceramic coating harden just for a little bit longer. Said to wait like an hour before you put the second coat on at least, so it's another 10 or 15 minutes till that. Uh, I'm gonna put the second coat on the hood real quick and then I gotta get out of here. So that's the plan for the rest of the day, yeah. Cleaning. For those of you who are concerned about me washing in the shop and all this dirty water going right down that drain, rest is easy because uh, there is a settling basin at the bottom of that drain. It's probably getting pretty full of dirt since I did the combine in here too, and uh, we need to clean it out, but we'll get to that. You know when it's plugged up because it stops taking water. So um, not a big deal. We'll get to that sometime. But it is nice to have a drain in here so that I can wash where it's warm and things dry out and it's not frozen. And yeah, that's why we have it. That's why I do it because I like to keep stuff clean and it's warm in here. Okay, now that our floor is clean, let's go ahead and get our second coat on this uh, hood of this tractor. It already looks really good. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, she looks pretty. Do you guys think that the red tractors just lay awake at night dreaming about being as pretty as the green tractors? I mean, just look at it. It's beautiful. Yeah, looks good. <clears throat> so the uh, second coat of ceramic coating is on. I'm happy with it. It looks great. Uh, side note on that uh, Avalon King ceramic coating that I bought, on their website, it said that one bottle was good for one car. And if you had a truck, you would probably need two. And so uh, I didn't know how far they would go on a tractor. Obviously, I'm not doing a ton of surface area, but that hood is big. It's a lot. Uh, so uh, I have now coated two tractors and this hood twice. And my bottle is not empty. There's not a ton left in there, but it's not empty yet. So uh, I'm happy with how far it's going. That's, that's great. I do want to do some more. I'm going to do the back fenders on this tractor. I'm actually going to do the windshield and probably the back window as well. I've heard that it keeps stuff from sticking to those really well, so um, we'll see. But for now, for today, that's going to be it. I have to get out of here and go get my boys. And uh, yeah, it's 5 o'clock or almost 5.30 on a Friday afternoon, so we're done for the week. Uh, I will be back Monday morning. And we'll keep working on stuff on this tractor. Like I said, we got tires coming first thing Monday morning. So we'll have to uh, uh, mess around with that. We do still have service to do to this tractor. I have not checked the front hub oil because obviously I got to take the outside dual off for them to change the inside one. So I figured I'd do that all in one shot. Uh, I've got to grease the fan drive. We've got to grease the ILS and the three point, and I got to finish cleaning out the cab yet. So we got probably two days work left to do on this tractor. I knew this one would take a little bit longer, especially with all the stuff that I had going on this week with uh, FFA judging and the farm show and all that stuff. So, um, but we had a good week, got a lot done, and I'm happy with that. Uh, you guys have a great weekend. I will see you again Monday or Tuesday morning when the video comes out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.